Welcome back to the Market Data Options series. Make sure you've seen the first two videos in our series because today we're building on that knowledge and we're going to be getting a lot more advanced. Up until now, we've only looked at tracking options positions in real time, but the option data formula offers so much more. You can get historic data as well, going back almost 20 years. So today I'm going to show you how to use historical data using a call calendar spread from last month as an example. I'm also going to build out the option data and stock data formulas dynamically using cell references this time. So instead of typing out the tickers as text inside each formula, I'm going to use a reference to the data from our upper table here. That'll let me quickly change tickers and backtest other options in the future. The first step for me is always to get the stock price as a reference. So that means using stock data. And here I'll make the formula dynamic by using cell references for the ticker, for the start date, and the end date. And then I'll add updated and close as the columns I want so that I can get a simple two column output with the date and the closing price. The next step is to pick our options. And we're going to use the 430 strike for each option since SPY closed around 430 on the 1st of March. And I'm going to go with a simple calendar with the short call 45 days out and the long call 75 days out. So that's going to be uh, 520 on the long call and 414 on the short call. What we're going to do is back test this calendar spread and see how it would have performed during a 15 day period and find out when the optimal time to exit would have been. And for the option data formula, this time I'm going to use cell references for my option symbols instead of typing it out inside each formula and that will make it dynamic. Now what I am going to do is build a formula to find the natural price of the calendar spread. You can use the midpoint price if you want. Uh, I like to use the natural price. So first step is the long call and so I'm going to find the bid price. And to do that we use the option data formula, then our option symbol, and then I'm going to add a bid and the entry date and exit date. And that worked, but I got headers, so I don't want any headers. I already put it the header in myself. So I'm going to uh, delete that cell uh, header reference, and I'm going to type that in manually. So that's going to be bid, comma, no headers. And now I have the result with no header values. Then we just need to repeat for the short call. So this time we're going to do the ask price and the formula is going to be option data, the cell reference, and now we do ask comma no headers, then the entry date and the exit date, also with cell references. Now a normal way to get the price of the spread would just to be subtracting the price of the short call from the price of the long call. And you can see here as I do that. Now this works fine. However, here at Market Data, we like to put all our option strategies in a single cell. So let's see how we can do that. The advantage to having everything in a single cell is that it makes it very easy to then feed the results into any other formula we're using for analysis. So after I build this out, I'll then copy the entire formula and feed it in to a max, min, and average formula just to illustrate. So you can see how we do this now. I do the calendar spread in a single cell. And so we're gonna have two option data formulas. We're gonna do the first one, the long call, and again, I'll do the cell reference to the long call. And now here I just want the bid price and no headers. And then I want my entry date and exit date. And now I'm going to subtract the short call. And that's going to be the cell reference for the short call. Ask, comma, no headers. 
And then again, the cell reference for the start date and the end date. Now, here we're only getting the result for March the 1st. And I did this on purpose to show you why this doesn't work. Uh, you need to add in another formula. You need to wrap the entire formula in a formula called array formula. And that's because we are doing array math here. We are subtracting the whole list of short call prices from the list of the long call prices. Now take a look at the results in column G and you'll see they are the same as column E. So we can now just go ahead and get rid of column E. We don't need to have all those formulas doing math one by one. We can just use our array math here in our single cell formula. So I am gonna just delete these columns right here. I don't need them. And I have now created a single formula with a calendar spread. And like I said earlier, I can now use this formula and feed it into any other kind of formula that I might want to use for analysis. So here's just a quick little illustration. So what if I want to find the, uh, the max, the min, and the average for each day on these prices? So I can just copy my whole formula and then paste it into any other formula that I want to use for analysis. And that's why I like to do um, these single cell formulas because it makes it then just so easy to do any kind of analysis in the future. And there you go. So just for our simulation here, the best day to get out of this calendar spread was the last day, 3.15 at $5.70. You now know how to use historic lookups in the option data formula. I hope this has been educational and I will see you again next time for our next video in the options series.